this video, we will be discussing the process on how to generate the IRP5 file from the payroll system. This is the file that you will use to import into EZ file to complete the EMP501 declaration and to submit it to SARS. Before we look at the actual process of generating the file, let's have a quick overview of the information that's exported to the IRP5 file. Many of you might have come across the word Business Requirement Specification, or BRS for short. This is a SARS document that outlines what the general rules are for the import file structure and also the actual file layout. Irrespective of the payroll system you use, this document specifies the layout required. The file will export the employer details first, and this will be the information as completed on your basic company information screen followed by each employee's information. This file works with source codes. So each set of information that's exported to the IRP5 file is represented by a source code, and the BRS will then provide the respective validation rules for each field. The source codes are also IRP5 codes when it comes to the financial values. To illustrate, let's look at easy file import error employer SEZ code invalid code 2083. Code 2083 refers to the source codes that we just spoke about. So in the IRP5 file, 2083 will be followed by the special economic zone as captured on the payroll system. As there is an approved list of special economic zone codes, which is attached in Appendix E in the business requirement specification, if any code loaded on the system doesn't match those codes, an error will be generated when you import the file into EasyFile, as it will be validated based on the information required. We recommend that you download the BRS document from the SARS website and keep it close by when importing your files so that you can refer to this document as it will give clear guidance as to what information it's having issues with and where on the payroll system you could possibly go and look at to resolve the issue. All common easy file import errors are communicated on our dedicated Sage City Year End Center with possible solutions. Now we can have a look at how to generate the IRP5 file. We recommend that you only generate your IRP5 files once you've completed your EMP501 recon and reconciled all your values. The IRP5 files for the interim submission will be generated from your live payroll system and the IRP5 files for the annual submission will be generated from your tax instance. Before generating any reports or completing your EMP501 declaration, we recommend that you create a folder and give it a unique name and save all the respective files and reports generated during the submission process into these folders. It will make it a lot easier for you to refer back to them should you have to locate a specific tax certificate for an employee or in the instance where you might have to do a resubmission at a later stage. There is an option to generate a test and a live run. The process for these two runs are very similar, but we will highlight the differences as we move along. We always do a test run first as this will give you the opportunity to test the data and fix any validation errors and or easy file import errors. Access any of your companies for which you would like to generate the IRP5 file. From the main screen of the company, go to Reports, Reports and Maintenance. Locate the IRP5 IT3A report and double click on it to open it. If you're doing the interim submission, you will select Periodic Reconciliation. If you are doing the annual submission, you will select Tax Year End. We always do the test run first. In that instance, you will select Test Run. If you are going to do the live run, you will then select Live Run. The difference between the test and the live run is that only the live file will import the tax certificates into EasyFile. And that is also why it is important that you name your IRP5 files accordingly so that you can distinguish between test and live runs. An on-screen message will also display when you select to do the live run for the tax year end process. 
If you have multiple companies with the same pay as you earn number, you can select to run this file for all of them and all companies with the same pay as you earn number will be listed and simply click on them to include them in the run. Or you can do a run for each of those companies and then individually import them into EasyFile and the values will all be totaled together. Once the applicable selections have been made, you can click on continue. The mandatory employer information on the basic company information screen must be completed. If there are any outstanding or incomplete fields, an on-screen message will populate when you click on continue of what needs to be corrected and it will automatically exit the report. You will now first have to go and correct these errors and once completed, you have to restart the process. If you clicked on continue and there were no corrections required, you can select your printing options. The RP5 IT3 Recon Report will print a list of all the employees with their year-to-date amounts per RP5 code, and the RP5 IT3 Summary Report will print the totals per RP5 code. When doing the test or live run, the print tax certificates will default to no. You can select to print them for the test run, should you wish to verify certificate data and to do spot checks. It's very important though that you take note that you should not issue these certificates to employees. When doing the live run, the option to print certificates for the periodic reconciliation will be grayed out, as you do not issue certificates for the interim submission, but only at tax year end. When doing the tax year end run and selecting to print certificates to blank paper, additional fields will populate that you can select to print on the certificates. Once all the selections have been made, click on continue. The following screens will display the RP5 file. If you're doing a test run, it defaults to RP5.21. The 21 will indicate the tax year that you are in. If you're doing a live run for the periodic reconciliation, the file name looks exactly the same as when doing a test run. When doing the tax year end, the file name is also the same. You will, however, have additional ticks at the bottom. These will only populate if you are licensed for info slips. I also just want to stop again at this point in time and to show you that irrespective of whether you're doing a test or a live run, the file names are always the same. It is therefore extremely important that you give your file names a unique name and differentiate between test and live. The RP5 submission files will always default to RP5.xx, where XX represents the current tax year. As I just mentioned again, we recommend that when you do the test run, you name the file RP5test.20 and with the live run RP5live.20. The file name must be changed if multiple submissions will be done for the same system. For example, if there are two companies loaded on the system with different pay as you earn numbers. The submission file can only be created for one pay-as-you-earn number. Therefore, the first company RP5 file can be named company1, RP5.20, and the second company file name will be called company2, RP5. This refers back to, doesn't matter which company you are in, the file name created will always be RP5.21 or .20. So you have to give it a unique name. Also, do not use spaces or special characters in the file name. If you receive a message that there's outstanding mandatory information outstanding, refer to the PDF printouts for validation errors. To resolve these errors, you can visit our dedicated Sage City Year End Center for Sage Business Cloud Payroll Professional, as we have a page that outlines all the common RP5 IT3A validation errors with possible solutions. Once all the outstanding information has been entered and corrected, the following message will display when the test run is successful.
your IRP5.20 or 21 or whichever tax year you are generating your file for will now be available to download. If the download process doesn't start automatically, just click in the middle of the screen on click here to start the download process. The test IRP5 file can now be imported into EasyFile. You can also watch our video which is available on YouTube in the Payroll Professional channel. Once the test IRP5 file has been imported into EasyFile and any import errors are corrected, you can follow the same process to generate the live IRP5 file and then also import into EasyFile which will then allow you to complete your EMP501 declaration.